I would like to start by acknowledging that we are here on the traditional territories of the Erie, Neutral, Huron-Wendat, Haudenosaunee, and Mississaugas. This land is covered by the Dish With One Spoon Wampum Belt Covenant, which was an agreement between the Haudenosaunee and Anishinaabek to share and care for the resources around the Great Lakes. We further acknowledge that this land is covered by the Between the Lakes Purchase, 1792, between the Crown and the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation. We as an institution recognize that a land acknowledgement is only one tiny step in the reconciliation process, especially for colonial spaces such as galleries and museums. There is much work to be done to better represent the voices and stories of this land that we occupy as settlers. And that includes ensuring that the artworks that hang on the gallery's walls accurately represent the culturally diverse community that we as a gallery are so proud to be a part of. So I'll now pass it over to our Director of Exhibitions and Collections, Toby Bruce, who will introduce Bryce and Alexis and kick off the conversation. Thank you. Thanks, Alexandra. Um, so this is, we, we've conceived of this to be a very informal evening. Um, in fact, I didn't even think I was going to be sitting here on the stage with them until about 10 minutes ago. Uh, but there's a, there are a few things, maybe a few housekeeping notes. Um, first of all, thank you all for coming. We have about 20 people online. And so this is a hybrid event. We have those of you here with us in, in body, and then we have those online. And what that means is uh, we, we, want to we, we conceive of this to be a sort of conversation, asking lots of questions and answering questions. But it means that if you do, if you'd like to contribute something, we unfortunately need to put a mic in your hands so that everyone at home can hear you. So we hope that you're, you're comfortable with that. And it's, we have the three mics, so as we go along and you put your hand up, we'll make sure we get a mic into your hand. Before, we, before I introduce Alexis and Bryce, I just want to give a little bit of a context into um, how this exhibition came about. <clears throat> and also a shout out to a couple of very important people who are in the room um, about, I'm going to say around 2015, um, Stephanie Vey, who was then the director of the Hamilton Arts Council, uh, brought together a number of people in the community based on a suggestion from the Visual Arts Subcommittee of HAC regarding this issue of a number of artists, senior artists in Hamilton, uh, who were passing, who were dying, and their stories weren't being captured. And there was a real concern that there was a generation of artists that we were losing. And so we had an event at the uh, library, and it was a great gathering of artists and people from organizations. And from that, the decision was made that we wanted to do something. We didn't know what it was going to look like. We didn't know how we were going to do it, but that the will was there. And so Steph took that away, and I would just want to, Steph, if you can put your hand up. Stephanie Vey is right here. Um, <clears throat> Steph, together with Jennifer Kay, who uh, came on board as part of the committee, they, put, they wrote a grant and were successful in, very successful, in receiving significant funds from Trillium's seed grant to produce a website. And that website looked at Hamilton artists from 1950 to 2000. It's called Building Cultural Legacies. It's online, it's organic, it is being added to, and it is housed by the Hamilton Arts Council. The grant was written through them and they are sort of the, the um, central organization. And I want to acknowledge David Holden, who can also put up his hand, who is here from Hack Now. So we continue to work with them, um, but they are the keepers of this amazing asset and resource. When the, lebs, when the website went live in um, 2019, I think, um, one of the components of the grant was to put together a small exhibition. And so in, this, in the small gallery at the back here, just as you were coming in to your right, the young gallery, um, Alexis Moline, through this grant, was hired to organize an exhibition. So she had to take 50 years and make an exhibition of that and if you think this was, if you think the larger exhibition was a challenge, imagine trying to do that with, you know, a comparatively small space. When we had the opening for that exhibition, um, the place was jammed, and as it should be, and it became really clear to us that we needed to do a much bigger celebration 
of this half decade of art production in Hamilton because it was so formative to um, the artistic landscape here. And, and but I'm not gonna get into building, or into um, climbing the coal white peaks because that was the, the, the precursor to the BCL project. We'll talk about that later, or during the course of the conversation, I'm sure. Um, and so we decided we wanted to do this much bigger project. Alexis was an obvious um, uh, candidate to, she had already done a significant amount of work with these artists. And then we thought, well, we'd also like to have someone who is a more senior established um, artist within the community. And uh, our, was sort of an easy choice. Uh, we approached Bryce and he very graciously uh, agreed to come on board. And the, you know, the, the, the culmination of all of this is the Bigger Picture exhibition. So I'm going to now formally introduce them. And then really the, uh, the format for tonight is there, I'm gonna start off, kick off with a question and then they're going to just really, they're gonna sort of interview each other and I'll jump in. And if they're saying something that you wanna hear more about, this isn't a talk and then a question period. If there's something you wanna add or you know, would like them to elaborate on, please just put up your hand, just like elementary school, and uh, we'll bring you a mic so we can have, so this can be a very or organic um, evening. Okay, are there any questions so far? No, we're good? Okay, great. Okay, <clears throat> also washrooms, I should say, are just through the door to the left. And feel free to, um, you know, if you, need, if you wanna get up and get a drink during the course of the, the conversation, or go to the washroom, or if you need a fresh air, please do so. Okay, Alexis Moline is an independent curator, arts professional, and writer who has worked in Vancouver, Toronto, and Hamilton. She received her Master of Museum Studies in collaboration with Sexual Diversity Studies from the University of Toronto. She was recently the curator of the Building Cultural Legacies Project, which I just spoke about. Was that your first curatorial? Um, yes. Into the mic. Proper, yeah. oh, yes, proper. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Great. Um, which led to the subject uh, project that we're talking about tonight. She's worked extensively within the Hamilton Arts community, supporting hundreds of artists through her research and curation. Bryce was born and educated in Hamilton, Ontario. Oh, your bio actually stipulates that, Ontario. I guess I didn't need to actually say that, did I? But we're here. Although there could be people from out of province. You're in Ontario. A visual artist and curator and proprietor of the Yumi Gallery since 2003. He was also the founding member uh, and first administrator of the Hamilton Artists Sync. He has held curatorial positions at the Burlington Art Center, right here at the Art Gallery of Hamilton, the Glenhurst Art Gallery of Brant, and the Art Gallery at the Japanese Canadian Cultural Center in Toronto. In addition, he has served as the Executive Director of the National Association of Japanese Canadians Toronto Chapter, and as the Chair of the National Association of Japanese Canadians NAJC Endowment Fund. Over the years, he has also been a National Executive Member of the NAJC, Visual Arts Crafts Design Officer at the Ontario Arts Council, co-chair of the Board of Directors, the Workers' Arts and Heritage Center, and a governing council member for the Hamilton Center for Civic Inclusion. What I'm gonna add, because Bryce is too humble to do so, Bryce was awarded the 2021 Governor General's Award for Outstanding Contribution in the Arts. In the announcement, it noted, quote, his contribution to the vibrancy of Hamilton's art scene is notable. In his practice, he builds bridges between artists and communities by supporting and amplifying their work. And Bryce's quote in, uh, in the same context was, a simple but very crucial part of doing the work that we do is getting to know one another. Community building and community development is an important aspect of everything I do. I have a real empathy for artists because I know what it's like to create work and to do it in isolation and without a lot of public res response. It's important to help them. Please join me in, join in welcoming both Bryce and Alexis. Okay, so where do we start? I know, I'm gonna ask a question. I'm gonna ask a question. And that question is, when um, you both agreed to do this project, what was your biggest hope for the project and your biggest concern? Um, <clears throat> I guess my hope was to involve as many uh, of my friends as possible <laughs> um, because uh, 
It's it's really a rare rare opportunity for um, well that the the, the, uh, the the art gallery um, created to um, invite um, many regional artists into the building, um, and it's something that um, I've always thought was important. Um, do you want me to go on? I, I, I sort, of, sort of, yeah. I was talking to um, Sheila Greenspan, who used to be the education head here years ago, and she um, subsequently went to the AGO and was the education officer there for a while. But um, just uh, just before the show opened, I learned that she had some wor some works in her collection at home by people like Diane Cizak and um, um, who's the other person that she Arturo Nagel. Arturo Nagel, thank you. And so um, I visited her and um, had an opportunity to talk to her. And, and she, she um, shared some of her ideas about the importance of um, collecting for a municipal gallery. And um, one of them was that, that she thought that not only collecting, but exhibiting the work of, of course, contemporary artists um, from everywhere, but that it was really important to collect and exhibit the works um, that, would, that would be seen by the public, she said, 200 years from now. And uh, I, I think that's a really important emphasis that, that um, the current gallery uh, start collecting with that kind of vision in mind. Um, okay, I got off on a tangent there, but uh, that's one gone. <laughs> um, yeah, Alexis. Um, so I guess biggest fear for the project was just how we would try to manage such a vast and diverse period of history with all how we were going to, first of all, reach out or to select and curate those artists. And I was so happy when we just came up with a brilliant idea of the open call, um, instead of kind of doing a more selective process, because that is so in the spirit of everything I learned about this generation and this, how the city works with artists in, in general. So that seemed like a brilliant solution. So that fear subsided the minute we came up with that and got the green light to go ahead with the open call. Um, and my biggest hope was to kind of raise awareness for younger generations and the generations that came um, past the year 2000 to um, kind of start building that um, awareness and community um, that goes through the generations and through the ages. Because I know when I was a student, um, I knew next to little <laughs> next to nothing about um, the arts in Hamilton. So now I think with the website and with this exhibit, I think it has fulfilled that hope in like becoming such a great resource for different generations to learn about. So what did you learn about us, Alexis? I can't say that publicly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I signed some documents. No, I learned every, I was so happy to, with everything I learned, like the spirit of, activism and collectivism like that's so prominent in this and feels so unique to this city like that people were just like the the quote that toby pulled from you bryce um about uplifting each other and how the arts were very run by the people here like since it's a, the city's inception really like go, dating back even to the women's art association in the 1800s like the people were the drivers of the art scene and um, like with you at the Inc, if there was not a space for artists to go, you just made one. So that was a great thing to learn. Um, yeah, I, th I think that's really what happened in this time period, 1950 to 2000, is that there, um, there were a lot of artists who came together to form collectives and, organ and establish organizations that are 
pretty solid even to, 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 um, to today. Um, and I mentioned them before, but it's worth um, listing them. Dundas Valley School of Art, Carnegie Gallery, the Hamilton Region Arts Council. Um, WAC. WAC. WAC was a, right at the end of that, yeah. Workers' Arts and Heritage Center. Um, the Inc. Uh, who else? Photo Union, mm -hmm. Zone Nipa. Cinema. Nipa. 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 Yeah. Glenhurst? I don't know about Glenhurst. <laughs> I don't That's really technically care not Hamilton. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so there was, there was, it was an opportunity for uh, for people to be involved with other artists and um, undertake projects. And um, um, when we did the um, the Now Show uh, at the uh, Hamilton Public Library, well, Terry's here. She's she was the chair of that committee. You want to tell us a little bit about how that came together? Here. Nope, he's, he's yours. I, I'm, um, my memory is really shot, so, but I will give it a try. Uh, Stuart McQuaig and Bryce brought together a really comprehensive book called Climbing the Cold White Peaks, and they arranged for the Art Gallery of Hamilton to do a show of contemporary artists. And I was at the Inc. at the time, and we decided to do a show um, <clears throat> of uh, historical artists. And we had lots of fun getting together. Lily Monroe was the um, Minister of Culture. And we went to Lily Monroe and asked if we could use the old library across the road. And it was tricky because the tiles on the roof were falling down and that was a bit of a nuisance. But anyway, we went ahead and had lots of fun and we painted it and it made it really come alive. And as in this show, we put out a call and I don't think anybody was turned down. I think we I had an amazing number of pieces. I can't remember how many, but it was a lot of fun. And <clears throat> like Alexis was saying, it was a time that Many of us are feeling sad that it's, it, that it's gone. But anyway, it was really fun, Bryce. I'll never forget, Bryce is a wonderful person, really, really steady, really wonderful guy. Yeah, that's why I asked her. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed that David had his hand up a second ago. Thank you so much. Bryce, I wonder if you could just talk very briefly about um, about it, your experiences with isolation as, as an artist before, you know, what were those pivotal moments, what were those pivotal experiences in Hamilton where you were brought into contact, where, I, I guess, what were the experiences in isolation that underpin the, the need today to bring artists together and to bring artists in, in and sort of community build? Um, what was that sort of like for you? I don't... I don't think I ever really felt isolated or alone here because um, my friends were artists, and um, and you know that's the wonderful thing about being an artist and having a community is that you know that um, you have people with shared values, um, lifestyles even, um, and and it gives you a sense of assurance that you're living a life that's worthwhile and that's shared by by and supported by others so I, I, know, I don't think I ever felt isolated and I'm, I've always been um, involved in uh, two communities the and and they they were they my involvement has been almost in parallel with the Japanese Canadian community and the artists community. So I never really said, called it the arts community. I called it the arts, art, artists community. And um, yeah, we, um, so it's, so when we had an idea, we could sit around in a pub or whatever and um, decide that we want to go down to James Street North or look around the city to rent a space um, where we could 
exhibit our art and get together and talk about art. And that's the way the Hamilton Artists Inc. started, really. Um, and I remember, well, Bob remembers too, Bob Yates remembers going around um, Dundas looking for rentable places and um, there were a number of, of um, locations we scouted out before we finally rented 143 James Street North, um, which is, there's an Asian food market there now, but it's right across the street from the current Inc. And um, I've told this story many times, but the, we found out that the building that we rented for, I think, $120 a month was owned by Herman Levy, who um, was a millionaire <laughs> and, uh, and, a, and a good friend of George Wallace, the sculptor and, and professor at McMaster. And uh, he... Um, he, he, actually, he came to the very first exhibition of the, of the um, Hamilton Artist Co-op, and I think he was pretty amused because of his great interest in art. He, he has an art collection. He had an art collection. And, um, and his, the second time that he got involved or came down to the gallery was when we did the retrospective of um, George Wallace's work, his sculpture and his prints. Um, you may know that he, Herman Levy ended up donating $15 million to the ROM and to McMaster Museum, but nothing to the Art Gallery of Hamilton. Um, and, uh, um, uh, and he, we prevailed upon him at, towards the end of his life to donate the building that we were renting um, to, to the Hamilton Artists, Inc. But at that time, it was too late, he said, um, because everybody else had hit him for all kinds of things, and he couldn't uh, leave it to us, William Street. There's a list of all the um, exhibitors. And there's so much overlap with this exhibition. It's great to see the list of names. Yeah, that they're still doing their work. Yeah, it's a school. And that, this is the Eaton Center, uh, where the first picture, group picture of artists um, took place. And you can recognize, like, that's Tor right in the foreground there, Tor Lukasik Foss. Tor is here. Is he here? Yeah, he just... Oh, Tor, and his mother, right, yeah, right <laughs> behind you. Yeah, and, yeah, the, this picture is pretty clear, so you can recognize a lot of people, I think, if you know them. Um, let's see, and this is the 2001 that we organized um, after that first one. The first one we called um, One Fine Day in Hammertown, and it was uh, based on a film uh, from, from uh, I think they, they gathered a bunch of jazz musicians in, in Harlem or the Bronx, and they called it One Fine Day in Harlem. And uh, so we, somebody had seen that, that movie and decided to call it call this one, one fine day in Hammertown. And then it became the big picture. I have to go backwards now. And the bigger pictures were organized, were they artist driven, were, they, were you working with the city? No, we had a, we formed a committee called the Big Picture Committee that, okay. that did a lot of um, art promotional projects. Like we draped the, the monuments, statues and sculptures downtown um, for a day without art and did things like that. Lobbied the politicians, the local councillors. I guess that's it. Hmm? 
That's it for the pictures, right? Or was there more? There was, I, I thought there were pictures from here. Weren't there some slide images of um, Yeah, there the are installation? this installation, yep. I don't see any documentation of the GO show at the GO station or the old train station. Yeah, I, I couldn't find any really? slides, yeah. I okay. got, um, Judy, might, Judy Burgess might have some. Yeah, okay, so you want to, Alexis, you want to talk about Donna? And... Always. <laughs> <laughs> um, so besides the, Kind of going back to this question of how we, how we began to start organizing and curating the show, um, we do have, of course, the main big room of the salon style hang, um, but everything was still part of the, of the open call, um, including these three more thematic rooms. So this first room focuses on women's art and um, during that time period. So these amazing penis paintings are by artist Donna Ibing. And she had issues back in the 70s when she first exhibited male nudes um, and faced a lot of censorship. And Bryce nicknamed her Dirty Donna at the time. Um, so she had quite um, a reputation to, to live up to because of Bryce there. <laughs> So because she was noticing she was getting such censorship from galleries who would put her works maybe in the near the back, like put kind of some disclaimer ahead or just... She, she had one story of there was one show, I don't remember where, where um, it was out of town and when she went to go, she sent in her art, it was accepted and when she traveled there a couple weeks after it opened, they didn't actually end up putting her work up. And they just said, oh, we didn't have room, or we forgot, or, or something like that. Do you... <laughs> yeah. Simcoe? Oh, Simcoe. Um, yeah, so, so that's another instance of censorship. So in response to all that, she said, um, it seems I'm only getting censored when the penis is involved, so I'm going to paint the penis. And that she did in all of these um, hilarious, satirical ways. So. Uh, what was interesting, even now, there was kind of the question of not so much censorship, but how are we going to present this, or does it need explanation, does it need context, um, in ways that other artworks didn't. And, and there's a lot of female nudes, of course, in the show that um, we didn't even think to question. So we do have a little um, kind of paragraph explainer there uh, to give a bit of context. Um, but it's just interesting that even, you know, 50 years later, it's still a bit of a question mark in people's minds when her work comes up, so. Um, so that's the other the thematic room we have is kind of about art and the environment. Um, so Bryce, do you, do you want to talk about that a bit? Oh, this is Robert Bateman, of course. Um, how many of Batemans do you have in your collection? Hmm. This is the big one. We have a lot of, well, I'd say we probably have about eight or nine oh. really early works from the 60s, whereas this is an 80s, mid-80s, I think, work, yeah. Well, I think everybody knows Robert Bateman and his paintings and his notorious reproductions. Um, they were gonna, uh, they were going to um, have a, um, an, uh, a gallery, a Robert Bateman gallery in Burlington, right? That never, came about, um, but he certainly influenced a lot of, a lot of young um, male painters at that time in the 80s um, who, who were painting wildlife scenes. Um, this is Kathy Gibbon. She, um, how many of these paintings did she do of the, it, it's the, the tire, tire yeah, fire. Yeah, it's a right? tire fire. The uh, Hagersville tire fire. She did a whole series of paintings 
based on that. They're really beautiful. And the Bateman, in contrast with Kathy Givens here, um, so there was this really interesting like theme in those decades where there was a lot of environmental activist type work, like this depicting the environmental disaster tire fire, but also a lot of like love for the nature of just like landscape and wildlife and stuff like that. So, which again, I think is very unique to Hamilton because we have all this industry and mismanagement and environmental um, not goodness. <laughs> and then as well, this vast beauty with you know, Dundas Valley and Coots Paradise and everything. So I, that was a really cool contrast in that room. Has Kathy had an exhibition here? Kathy, Kathy Gibbons? Gibbons? Like a solo exhibition? Uh, early, in earlier decades, I believe, yeah. but not in the last 20 years. No. Oh. Okay, this is, um, if you've seen the show, this is Bob Yates's. Um, painting of the Burlington Bay called Nakasa, which is the indigenous name. And on the right um, uh, are the fiery steel works. And on the left is bucolic Burlington, I guess. But you, the interesting part is beneath the surface of the water where there's a lot of um, almost grotesque things happening. Oh, there is it, the end? That's can we go, sorry, can you go back to the images of the salon? One of the things that I thought was, that really came to the fore in this space, and I'd just love to hear your thoughts on it, were the generational, going back to this, where there were so, you know, there's Judy Major, there's Don Carr, there's, um, uh, Lauren Taves, uh, and then there is also all of those, a generation of artists who studied with them as well, and standing in that room and sort of taking in all works at the same time. There's some really, you know, I think it was, um, it was an artist whose work, whose name I had heard, I'm going to forget who it was, at any rate, but I had never actually seen their practice. And then the, there was a work that was brought in, and as soon as I saw the work, I realized, ah, okay, now I see how a generation of artists, you know, were looking to some key sort of players in the community and the kind of um, resonance that they have decades later. I don't know if you wanted to say anything about that or not. Um. <clears throat> Yeah, well, certainly the uh, students or the artists who attended McMaster were were um, influenced by their instructors, especially later on with uh, Graham Todd and um, Judy Major, I guess. Um, and there were cohorts, especially in the 80s, that um, that were really exceptional. Um, people like uh, Paul Rappel and Judy Burgess and um, Lisa Worla, John Kinsella. I'm I'm pair, I'm just, I'm naming them in pairs because they actually um, became couples and married and have kids and have settled in Hamilton now. Um, so that they were exceptional in that way too. Um, who else? Um, Paul and Fiona? Paul Svetich. Oh, and Paul Svetich, yeah. Um, oh, geez. Oh, Janice Kovar and um, Paul and Wright. But they were all around that time. Um, Ralph Caterini. Um, they they graduated, and the, the the really neat thing was that that they were the students that came off c campus and got involved at, in the Hamilton Artists Inc. and and uh, um, became board members eventually, but uh, they didn't they weren't um, um, confined to the campus uh, to the campus as so many 
uh, cohorts are. They don't seem to come out and and get involved in the community, but but they, those guys really did. How's everyone doing? I'm just looking at the time. It is 20 after 8. Um, are there any questions from home from our from our our uh, our visitors online, attendance online? I can't hear what he said. Tyler's going to ask, okay. and but as of right now, there aren't any questions. But Thanks, Denise. Viewers online, if you have any questions for the curators, please put them in the chat. Are there any more questions or is there anything else that you want to ask each other? I just, uh, oh, I don't know. I, uh, no, just one, as, one um, thing that came to my mind just now as an example of um, my um, regard for the community of artists is, is when I was working at the Burlington Cultural Center as the curator. I was, for, I was hired by Ted Piechuk in, I can't remember, the late 80s. And um, I was there for six years. And um, Ted left to come here, I think. Mm -hmm. And the new director um, came in and, um, and fired me. <laughs> so, um, but what happened as a result of that, I, I'm so... Um, heartened by the response of the community of artists because they really supported me. You know, they, there was a real um, battle in the newspaper and um, uh, there were articles about me, articles quoting the president of the Bur Burlington Cultural Center, um, uh, justifying my firing. And they used that word, fire, you know, firing. They didn't just let me go. <clears throat> I, I had a lawyer and, and, you know. So this went on for a while. Um, but there were artists who spoke up on my behalf, like Paul Rappel in the paper and Bob Yates. And um, mind you, it didn't accomplish anything other than my moving on. But... Um, but they um, they organized. It was actually V. Jane Gordon, uh, Pat Coswick, and Donna Ibing organized um, an evening for me at the Hamilton Artists Inc., um, which was on J James Street, further down the street where um, the the Wild Orchid is now. Um, that was. That was one of the locations that the ink um, uh, had at, at that time, but it was you know it was um, it was an evening where people got up and and spoke. Um, they spoke at length. We drank a lot of beer, and um, and I said at the end it was like being at my own funeral, you know, because <laughs> everybody was. <laughs> Talking about about me, but I but that, that was such a um, I don't know. It was just a reassuring, glad event, um, despite the occasion. And I, yeah, I'm I, I'm really grateful for that. On that note, I'd like to add mm -hmm. that John Kinsella says thanks for all that you do and all that you have done in the community, Bryce. And I think it's safe to say that this exhibition really could not have been, would not be what it is uh, without your complete involvement. One of the things that uh, neither Bryce nor Alexis have talked about really is the amount of, um, I call it sort of tree shaking that they did. We, we put the call out. Um, it was a really short call, it was a really short run. We asked a lot of artists to find images of work from decades ago and get them to us. Um, and between 
and Alexis, they really, I mean, they contacted everyone that they knew and sent personal emails um, and followed up. And this was months and months of work. And the exhibition is what it is because of those relationships um, and the respect, I think, that everyone holds uh, uh, specifically for, for Bryce in this context and the longevity with which he um, has really helped uh, not just shape, but he's, I, I think of him, I, he, he doesn't like this, but I call him the Eminence Gris of the art community because he's, he has been here s actively at the center for decades. Um, and uh, it's pretty extraordinary to have you as active as you are, continuing to be at the forefront and at the center uh, after five decades of work in this community. Um, so on behalf of everyone here, I just, I wanna thank both Bryce and Alexis, um, not only for the work that they have done in this exhibition, uh, I think it really, it certainly exceeded all expectations. I think, I think we gave them an impossible task almost to deal with five decades of artists working in this community as it exploded and to do that in an inclusive and thoughtful um, uh, way is, is really quite extraordinary and we have heard nothing but um, bravos and accolades for this project. The artists, you can't please everyone all the time, but and maybe they're just not telling me, but the artists seem to be happy um, and the public is, is really, really, uh, wowed by this, they they feel a, a great sense of, um, I think, wonder and pride walking through this exhibition. So um, on behalf of all of us here, I want to thank you for coming, for spending your evening with us, and a very sincere thanks to Bryce and Alexis for uh, bringing this to fruition for us. Thank you. Thank you.